Well, that was a fucked up set. So why do I identify with it so much? That probably says more about me than the movie. Here are my immediate thoughts on I Saw the TV Glow. Well, I finally got to this. I Saw the TV Glow is the latest A24 head trip written and directed by Jane Schoenbrum and starring Justice Smith and Bridget Lundy Payne. In 1996, a classmate introduces withdrawn teenager Owen to a mysterious late night television show for young adults, a vision of a supernatural world beneath their own. In the pale glow of the television, Owen's view of reality begins to crack. So Jane Schoenbrunn created the super weird we're all going to the world's fair, which while I think was still flawed, I still really liked the aesthetic and how crazy it was. And the themes of identity and reality that were in this film seem to be extended in I Saw the TV Glow as well. And I know Schoenbrunn is a queer trans filmmaker, so I am sure that she drew a lot from her own personal experiences. Let me get into Schoenbrunn's filmmaking first, which in this movie I really love. The film for the most part has a really quiet tone to it as it navigates around its main protagonist, Owen played by Justice Smith, who is struggling and feels trapped within his own sense of self and identity. And Schoenbrunn colors the film with blacks and neons, but everything is heightened. There are scenes where two characters will be in the same room and they'll talk to each other, but one character is lit normally, the other one is lit way more heightened with neon colors all around them. Or you'll see a scene where someone will shrink in a matter that seems to be impossible based on the space that they're in, and it's really well done. But this isn't really a film about reality per se, as it is more of a meditation on nostalgia and how certain elements of media can make you feel a certain way when you're going through certain struggles in your life. I can tell you from my own experiences, the struggles I had when I was in high school, there were two versions of me the tyrannical theater geek, the one that wrote and directed all of his plays and directed on stage with an iron fist. And then there was who I felt was the real me, withdrawn and cynical and suffering from mania and really didn't know it at the time, but scared and embarrassed and just felt like he didn't fit in and just had imposter syndrome. And no matter how much he tried, just didn't feel like he had a place in this world. During those days, hip hop was my sanctuary, whether it was the Wu, Outkast, Nas, Goody Mob, the Fugees, anyone that blew up during that time, that music was a sanctuary for me. It was really easy to get caught up in these songs and honestly, a lot of that music still shapes who I am today. So I certainly related to the character of Owen who found solace in media in a world that to him just didn't make any sense. But yeah, let's get to the performances and I will say your mileage will vary based on the acting style of this movie where a lot of the actors deliver their lines in a monotone manner. Justice Smith himself as Owen really doesn't show a whole lot of emotion, except when he is watching his favorite show, The Pink Opaque, a Goosebumps-like young adult horror show. When he is asked if he likes boys or girls, Owen responds with, I like TV shows, and that sort of gives you a little bit of an idea into his headspace and really the kind of struggles that he is having in terms of his own sense of identity. I liked him, but I admit, he wasn't the most interesting character. The most interesting character in the movie for me was Maddie, played by Bridget Lundy Payne, who is doing her best Aubrey Plaza cosplay. But seriously, I really did like her in this 
There is a mystique, a mysterious quality about her that she really carries. And it is through her we see the movie really get into warping reality to these two main players. Bridget Lundy Payne plays Maddie as a truly disturbed person. There were times I'm watching this movie and I'm like, is she suffering from schizophrenia? And if you approach the movie from that point of view, I feel it actually boosts the whole altered reality angle a little bit. But there are things between both Maddie and Owen that I just do not want to spoil or reveal. The show in question that Owen and Maddie are obsessed with, The Pink Opaque, really looks like an offshoot of a Goosebumps show from Nickelodeon back in the 90s. I mean, it is clear that Jane Schoenbrum has a love of these young adult horror shows and the aesthetic is there, whether it's the 4x3 frame, the tracking line so you know it's a VHS, the acting style, the music, the graininess of the show. I mean, it is clear that there was a lot of love and care and attention to detail put into this show. And every time I saw this show and I was transported there, I just really wanted to learn more. Am I asking for a pink opaque show now? The production design and cinematography for I Saw the TV Glow is really good. When we are in 1996, it really looks like the mid 90s. Even if the film is supposed to look a little off, there were still some elements that felt familiar for me as a teenager growing up in the 1990s, so I really appreciated the aesthetic. Now I will warn you, this is an A24 movie, and if anyone knows anything about that studio, knows they are not ashamed to release non-mainstream weird shit. And I Saw the TV Glow is not a mainstream movie. It plays with time, it's quiet and somber, things are not explained for the audience, there are things you're just going to have to figure out for yourself. And it's A24, so there is a level of fucked up fuckery going on. So if you're hoping to walk into a movie that you can shut your brain off for two hours, proceed with caution. But this is a movie that the less you know, the better the experience. Overall, I did enjoy I Saw the TV Glow as a supernatural psychological thriller. I wouldn't say that this is a scary movie, but the creepiness factor is there. Jane Schoenbrunn has created a world that is beautiful with a cinematography and imagery, but also slightly off and at times terrifying for our protagonist as they try to navigate the terrain of their sense of identity and reality, which I believe were well explored as themes. I do wish Justice Smith had a little more to his character. Not that a monotone, withdrawn character can't work in a movie like this, but Smith's performance at times did feel like he was reading lines for the first time. Bridget Lundy Payne was awesome though, and at times, I sort of wish the movie followed her more often as I felt she was the more interesting character. But there is definitely a Donnie Darko vibe with this movie as it plays with reality and time and just has this weirdness to it that is unique only to this film. And that is precisely why I believe A24 is the best studio out there. Every film of theirs is different in some way and they allow their filmmakers to really speak their artistic truth and this was an experience I really did enjoy. I watched this at home and I believe streaming is the best place for this film. Honestly, I was impressed. I saw the TV glow is a super hit for me. Oh yeah, Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit is in this movie. He was totally unrecognizable to me until I saw the end credits and I was like, what? But I suppose if this keeps him away from making insensitive movies about people with mental illnesses, with John Travolta, no matter how silly that movie is, Jane Schoenbrunn is doing the universe's work. What did you think about I Saw the TV Glow? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so we can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.